Welcome and hello everybody. We are Big Childs and Creatives and we want to share with you our experience along this great campaign that we are now involved called Traders of Government. And we get, we'd like to, to share with you our experience uh, that you will be part of this campaign with us, painting with us, and enjoying the campaign as much as we will do. So welcome, and we hope that you enjoy this series of <coughs> live streaming that we will do in all the, the time uh, that we have the campaign, and this time we will paint this miniature that is one of the first special kits of the campaign that it was already unlocked by you, uh, I think this morning or some, something like that. And this is the first special kit of the campaign. So this is the sculpture of this wonderful character made by Patrick Mason. Lovely work from Patrick. And yes, this is a huge char character of the, the dwarves, mostly compared with other members of the crew. You can see the difference of height. So, these uh, painting series will take some days, so I hope you enjoy these live streamings that all the days, working days, will happen in, at this same hour, like today, 6 uh, p.m. CAST. So we will, will wait for you, and let's start with the process right now. Let me see. Okay. Okay. So for the painting process, I will separate the the main character I glued to the pelican with a little bit of blue tack. And as you can see, I mount the, the miniature and simply I applied a, a black spray coat, prime coat, and over the first black a prime coat, I applied a white prime coat to mark the lights over the model. This emphasized the volumes and helps help me to, to see where the lights will fall onto the character. <coughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> Still people are arriving to the streaming, so for the newcomers, Hello and welcome. Okay, so we'll be begin with the with the pelican. So I separate the dwarf, say goodbye to him, and in the following days we will paint the the dwarf until the finish of the of the model. So, to start with the, with the painting process, I always like to, to match the, the planes of light and the planes of shadows. So, as you can see in the, <coughs> in the, um, in the concept art over the right left of the image, you can see that uh, even Admundsen is the, the concept artist 
and the illustrator of all of these wonderful characters. We love so much his work, and I think is is crazy uh, the work that he did for this campaign. So uh, I take a look to the concept part, and you can see that there are some planes of light, some planes of shadows, and uh, there. There is a trick game about uh, <coughs> colors in, in these two uh, planes of light and shadows. You can see the, the cold tones uh, in, the, in, the, in the shadows that are making some beautiful contrast of temperature against the light planes that are more warmer. <coughs> so keeping this in mind, I will start to to make some, some mixes with my paint. And I'll start to, to matching the saddles for the pelican, okay? So as I did, as I said, sorry, uh, before I start mixing some uh, cold tones for the saddles, <coughs> for, the, for the saddles, I usually use Sorry, <coughs> uh, there is a lot of warm in, in Spain, so we need to, <laughs> to refresh with some water. Ah. Okay, for the planes of the saddles, I will use this, this cane of paint. Mm, it's called Chimera Colors. And the reason for that is why these uh, paints are strongly, strongly uh, pigment, uh, very powerful pigmented, and uh, <coughs> has a, a strong power of coverage. So uh, I will need to, to do maybe one coat or um, two coats to achieve the color that I want. So for this part of the process that's, that is, is a, like an sketching, Okay, uh, will be perfect. So my saddles will be cold, so I will pick some blue, some magenta. The magenta is a color that I uh, introduce in all my mixes, so uh, it's not cold, but uh, it make the colors more vibrant and deep. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the concept, the color are a little purple. So I will use a touch of red too, because red with blue will make purple. Okay. And to compensate a little bit of yellow. You will see later for what the yellow it is. So let's start. Let's talk a more paint. <laughs> if you don't comprehend something, uh, feel free to ask me because I am reading your comments and uh, maybe are something uh, unclear, so I will be happy to to respond your your questions. So be free. Okay. I don't know if you are seeing the palette, but I mix in blue and magenta. Okay, I'll move a little bit to the left so you can see the tone. And this tone is very strong, very saturated. So I will mix a little bit of yellow to the saturated a little bit. Okay. Dark, it isn't. 
Uh, now I will start to make another color for my for my not deeper shadows. So I will paint the deeper shadows and the other shadows that are not too dark. Okay. So for that, I will mix something similar to the previous mix, but in this case I will add a little bit of white. White or whichever color that have some white. For example, this one is a salmon rose. Okay, so I am ready to start. Hello to the newcomers. <laughs> Still are appearing people. Okay, let's start. In this part of the painting process, I don't care about the details. I simply try to cover all the planes of shadows, all the planes of light, the deeper shadows, the deeper planes. And in the subsequent steps, I will work on the detail, but not in this step. Okay? You can appreciate that I only paint in the parts that the black primer is sewed. This is why, because are the places of the shadows are located. Okay? This is the function of the black and white priming to mark me the planes of light and shadows. So I clearly see where the light and where the shadow is. Okay, as you can see, as I going up, I start to see gray parts. This means that these parts of the mm, feathers are not in light, are not in shadow, at in the middle tones. Okay. What happened? Um, okay. I think that the signal was missed. Okay. So in this part of middle tone, I apply a brighter color to mark this part of middle light or middle shadows, as you want to call it. Is my English understandable? <laughs> okay. You can see the difference, the difference between this color and the other are making a gradient in this part. I always take a look to the concept part to match the colors. as close as I can. But it's not neat that these colors are exact. Later we can adjust 
the tones, add more, change the tones, etc. So in all the parts that we see, black primer or gray primer, I apply these tones of shadows that you can see. This part have all, are almost black because the dwarf does, that is over the pelican uh, is making a projected shadow over this part of the pelican. So these feathers will be in, in shadow, okay? And this part that, that are almost white, I don't paint. I don't paint in this step, nothing, because this, these feathers are in the light planes of the miniature. This is not the case of this part. Okay, so I will paint with a middle shadow. And this part. It's the same. I will remember to you that I will be painting the miniature on the following days until I finish the miniature. I will show you only uh, the, the final hour of my work every day because I think this takes me a lot of hours and make it, ma maybe it will be bored to you to see all the process. But you will see, I hope, things that will be interesting for you that can be useful for you to paint your models and to make an approach to the way that we paint our miniatures. That all the people say maybe, oh, it's too difficult and this kind of things, but making in the correct way, I think that is not difficult. So you can see these kind of things. You will see that I'm not very precise with my brush strokes because in this step I don't need it. Okay? This is another part of the miniature that you can guess that is all in shadows. The down part of the chest, the stomach, so, is to match this part as easy as this. Put all this plane in shadows. Later, we will do variations, okay? We will start defining the feathers and this kind of things that are more complicated. But in this step, is an as easy as do this. Nothing more. I don't need nothing more. As you can see, the power of the coverage of the paint is great because I'm making one coat and you will see the color. I like to make at least two coats to uh, ensure that the color is on the surface, okay? But I think with this kind of paint, it's quite fast to make this 
part of the process, the sketching. Okay, you can see the difference between the light and the shadows. And I'll try to keep these planes of light, light and shadows in all the process. By the way, it's okay the image. You can see clearly the the process. We had problems in other streaming that we did before uh, with the with the image, and you see, you said to us that uh, we need to improve. Or, or media's uh, tool, so we did, and I hope that you can see the process uh, the best that you can. The quality of the image, I, I know that it maybe it's not the best, but at the end, I think it is good. It isn't? Okay, I'm making again another mix for the medium shadows because it's warmer here in Madrid and my mixes dries quite uh, quickly. Hi, Rory. <laughs> Hi. Hello to the newcomers. Don't rush yourself. I will be there all the days until I finish this miniature from the Kickstarter that is running now. Traders of the Coverland. Maybe you will know, but if someone don't know what it is, you can Google that and find some information. This is a miniature on, already unlocked in the campaign, and this is an exclusive miniature of the campaign. You can only buy that in the Kickstarter. So, if you want it, don't lose the opportunity. Okay, I start to making some little shadows in this part. Okay. And I'll continue with the other face of the miniature. It's pretty the same that I did before. Okay, I need to redo my mix. It's terrible, the weather. to painting. I prefer to paint in in winter. But it's funny at the end. Okay. Hey, how are you? <laughs> how are you? This is our favorite baker.
Okay, and the inner parts of the wings, these parts are all in the deepest saddle, so I will cover this in a quick way, okay? And maybe at this stage of the process, sounds weird for you the appearance of the miniature. But I think when I apply the light, all takes his forms. Because I think in that this, this part is repeat the, 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 the work over this part, I will start to focus the work in this part, okay? So we can advance more quickly. Hello, Florent. <laughs> Hello to the new arrivers. <clears throat> okay, so I have matched the, the parts of shadows. So I continue to make the light. For the light, I will use a color that will contrast with the color of the shadows, as uh, even Admundsen make a um, perfect in the concept part. As you can see in the in the concept part, the color of the lights are more warmer than the than the shadows. So, for the lights, I will pick some clear color like this one, for example. Uh, salmon rose, as you can see, is very clear, bright. Sorry, and I need to mix with some bluish color in order to make something natural for the light. Okay, so I think that maybe this color will work. Okay, you can see the wet palette. Okay, you will see it's not warm. I need to add something more yellowish. Oh, I already have the yellow one, okay. And maybe I will add a little bit of this color. Okay, I think this will work. The only thing I need is a color that is close to the to the one saw it in the in the concept part, but I don't need to be extremely exact. Okay, so I will start to cover the feathers of the light planes in this way. Sorry if sometimes you can see the brush strokes. There are some parts that are difficult to reach in this position. Okay, I will use more mixes for the lights. <laughs>
What do you think? Is starting making sense for you now? The color? I can start to define some of the feathers of this part. And in this step, I'm going more precise than in the one before. Okay. ¿Qué tal, Mario? <ríe> ¿Cómo vas? Bienvenido. Okay. I'm defining some of the volumes of this part. This part is the one that I will detail the most because it's near the face of Kitty, by the way, is the name of the pelican, Kitty. <laughs> so for the newcomers, I want to remember that this is the first video of the series along the Kickstarter of the Traders of the Coverland, and I'll be painting this miniature until it's finished. So I hope to see you there. The next day will be on Monday, at the same hour like today. At this point, I want to congratulate to Patrick Masson, the sculptor of the miniature, because he did an amazing work. As always, he's one of the best miniature sculptor in the world, and we love to to collaborate with him another once again. His miniatures are always incredible, trust me. Okay. The head, the, part, the upper part of the head, is all a plane of light, so I will cover this plane with light.
Okay. So you can see how the model start to to pop up with the lights and the shadows. The only thing I need is to work more precisely in in these two things. But I'll do another additional steps at this point in order in order to I will work a little bit on the chest but I now will go into clean the transitions a little bit in order to have a more defined work over this part. I will use the, the eyebrows that makes this task more easy and quick. I'm defining a little bit these feathers. By the way, uh, which are the miniature that you like the most of the campaign? Okay. I'm making some highlights on these feathers and the texture that is already sculpted is wonderful because for the painters make the the work easier if you pass the the brass like this you can see the texture flow flow up Okay, maybe I will add some lights over this part. But no so strong like the others on this part, okay? This will bring to the miniature some uh, sense of zenithal light. Bye bye. So you can see
the difference of the light that I applied in the different parts. To make the variations, okay. And as I see in the concept, in this part, this a uh, more orange light. I will start to put, okay. to have the reference. This is a colder light than the others. And this is why I get more contrast with this color. Okay, and in the head, of course. Maybe the head is the part of the miniature that is most exposed, exposed to the light. So I will highlight this part with this color. The upper part of the miniatures of big sizes is always very difficult to paint, but if you can't to put some fingers in a specific point, you can get a good candle of the situation. So don't be afraid to touch the miniature. Don't you do that too much because you can make some such in uh, finish in the paint but if you do it a little bit nothing will happen you will be more precise on your brush strokes okay I'm near to finish and to start to make some cleaning on the transitions, smoothing, smoothing the transitions that I sketch on the model. Okay, so here is my first approach on the sketch of the light and shadows. So now I will prepare some mixes on my airbrush. I will use a middle saturated tone for example I will use a little bit purple 
or magenta and a little bit blue in order to achieve a magenta ok I think this is a predominant color on the miniature the purple so I will start to apply the paint trying to airbrush the paint onto the shadow part. This is why I put the miniature in this way. Okay? So the paint will deposit in the recesses of the miniature. As you can see, the same properties of the paint, the Chimera paint, has a great coverage and a strong color. So for this kind of uses are very good too, because cover the miniature quickly. You don't need to make a thousand of passes with the eyebrows, okay? Okay. Also, I can do the same thing with the lights. with a bright color I will use this paint golden for this task because this white is very bright it will make my colors brighter gives more light to the to the miniature and I will and I like to make some tones on the light so I will use this paint for this task okay I will use a, com a color similar that the one I used before for the lights something like that okay and the process is similar I will apply this color but in this case instead of this of this direction I will use the opposite this one in order to the paint will deposit on the upper parts of the miniature this is the way I in which I take advantage of the sculpture if your sculpture is good you can use this technique 
mixing your eyebrows with your brush and start defining your miniature. Okay. I will use some variations in these feathers, like in the concept, applying some light in the feathers of the saddles. These var variations are something natural. And I will apply some tones to ending this part of the process with some orange I will use this one for example it's too strong so I will dilute this with other color maybe a little bit of blue in order to make it not so strong okay and this kind of variations are applied in random places in order to make the paint more organic this will be made the colors applied more bi vibrant as you can see the same will happen with we paint the this part and the legs So, this is the work for today. What do you think? Do you like it? This is the difference between this part and the worked part. The next day I'll start to work in the next step, defining the feathers, maybe painting other parts and so on. But this is just the beginning. So on Monday I hope to see you there and continue with this uh, fantastic uh, miniature of the Kickstarter that is was unlocked yesterday. This is our first um, uh, exclusive kit of the Kickstarter. Um, maybe some of you um, ask to us about the 
the Kickstarter and the way that it works. And uh, in this part of the streaming, I'd like to, to comment that uh, thing because as you can see, let me show you our Kickstarter. Uh, okay. Here they are. Okay. As you can see, we have uh, different options for you. And uh, in the streaming, we have been painting one of these miniatures exclusive for the Kickstarter. You can only get these models on this campaign and uh, will be another one if uh, we reach to certain levels. So uh, uh, it's the same like, like with the other reference of the Kickstarter. As you can see, there are a lot of things to unlock and um, still a lot of things to news to see. So I hope that you enjoy this experience, this Kickstarter and with the with the following days we will unlock all this stuff that we prepare for you. So thank you very much to follow us, to to see us and to support us. Thank you very much. Bye bye.